So <clears throat> that brings us to the next paper by Pei Wang and Nuno Vasconcelos towards realistic predictors. Hello, everyone. I'm Pei Wang. Today, I will introduce our work towards realistic predictors. This work was done in UCSD, supervised by my advisor, Professor Nuno. Let's begin. Uh, almost all recent computer vision and machine learning algorithms are optimistic. For example, they try to recognize, detect, or segment all instances without regard to how hard the task is. Like, try to detect this person in a very low resolution scene, identify who this disguised guy is, and recognize what these weird digitals are. But this is not like, uh, not like our humans do. For a human, we have a sense of our limitation. Most of humans can do certain things and do them well. But beyond this, they will say, oh, sorry, I don't know how to do that. So they first analyze the difficulty of each task. Then they will accept tasks that are doable, work on what they can do, and gradually overcome the limitation. For example, most of the people are willing to classify this is a Dalmatian, this is a golden retriever. They will say, yes, it's easy. I can do it. But when facing hard tasks, they are willing to refuse to do that. For example, if you ask people which these two dogs are, most of people will say, sorry, I can't do it. We refer to this property of human as realism. This is very important. Many applications can benefit from it. For example, it can circumvent risk in self-driving system. If this string is too complicated for the smart car to detect these people, we would like to let it refuse to perform task, stop, and re require additional information from other sensors rather than dash to these people. Another example is in medical detection. We would like to let a computer do easy tasks to guarantee a good performance compared to human experts and leave the hard one for expert, rather than let the computer do every image and provide uncertainty results. In summary, for most of application cases, actually, nobody cares about the performance is 70%, 80%, or 90%. They are only concerned about whether the system can give us a guaranteed performance, or whether the system can achieve my, uh, uh, my desirable performance. So we think the vision system should reject to perform hard tasks and require additional information from other sensors for this task so as to guarantee a target performance on accepted ones. For common standard classifier, they try to classify all example no matter how hard they are. But in this paper, we define a new type of classifier. We call it realistic classifier, which can reject examples deemed too hard and guarantee a target performance on the accepted ones. A possible implementation is at this sequence. First, to train a hardness predictor to assign a hardness score to each example. Then, we threshold hard examples according to pre choosing threshold T, reject examples having large scores than T. Finally, to train a classifier on the remaining examples. However, estimating how hard each example is is not a trivial problem. The main challenge is that there is no ground truth for how hard the example is. Although artificial annotation is available, examples that are hard for humans may not also be hard for computer and vice versa. Another challenge is that harness criteria should be classified specific. For example, for musicians, it's easy to distinguish all kinds of music scale. But for most of people, it's very hard. What's more, we think the confidence score is not good enough. Here we say it is self-referential. That means the scores are obtained by the classifier itself. A typical example is adversary examples. Although adversary examples have very, lo very high confidence scores, obviously we, can, we cannot think the, the easy ones arbitrarily. The most related work is failure prediction. Its goal is to build a system that can predict the failures of a predictor. This method relies on post hoc analysis of predictor performance, simply learning a regression or classifier from its mistakes. We think its problems are simply fitting regressed scores is suboptimal, and the classifier trained on the entire data set is not matched to the remaining ones better. In addition, 
The harness predictor should be classifier specific and not self referential. It should be trained with the classifier jointly. So, our realistic predictor aims to be on this by integrating the learning of harness predictor so as to guarantee optimal classifier performance on non rejected ones. Specifically, we propose an architecture composed of classifier and an auxiliary harness predictor to jointly learn these two predictors. The input image is fed into two subnetworks at the same time, and we define two types of loss functions for each subnetwork. Here we call the classifier as the main network and the harness predictor as HPNet. They are tra trained jointly and alternatively with an adversary learning way. Let's go to the details. To train the classifier, we use a variant of cross entropy loss, a cost effective cross entropy loss as loss function. The weight SI is a sigmoid output of harness predictor network. It can be seen as a harness score for sample I. And this way, we encourage the classifier to try to classify all examples with large loss. Here, our logical is that if we want to know harness score for each example, we have to try our best to do all tasks. To train the harness predictor, we define a binary cross entropy loss with reversed semantics. Here, PIC is the output of the main network. It is the entry of the soft max distribution corresponding to the ground truth label of the sample I. The surface of this loss function is shown here. Its minimization is when SI is equal to 1 minus PIC. This actually encourages large scores for poorly classified examples with low PIC and small scores for well classified examples. That's it to say. This objective function actually penalizes the incorrect classification of easy samples and the correct classification of hard samples and encourages correct classification of easy samples and the incorrect classification of hard samples. So SI can be seen as a measurement of the sample hardness. Thus, given these two loss functions, we can alternatively train the two networks. We first evaluate the learned hardness score. We show the evolution of learned hardness score distribution on MNIST test set over training. We simply say that as the classifier improves, the distribution shifts from right to left. It means that with the training ongoing, less and less examples are considered as hard. This process is like humans. When we learn more, the hard task will become easy. Next, we compare the final learned hardness distribution by two different complexity network structures. Here, VGG means that the main network and HPNet are both based on VGG network, and ResNet has similar meaning. We see the score distribution of ResNet is sharper than that of VGG and close to zero. It indicates that better models can lead to can lead to less hard examples. And also, the hardness predictor has learned that ResNet is a better model. Finally, we turn to a very important result for evaluating our realistic predictor. Here, we use a standard, st standard CNN as non-realistic classifier. It has the same network complexity structure as realistic classifiers. And it uses confidence score as hardness criterion. Low confidence score corresponds to hard samples. We record the removed percentage on test sets when we want to guarantee different target accuracy. We see for target accuracy, our realistic predictor can accept more examples. Also, we compare realistic predictors constructed by VGG and ResNet. We see although VGG is a weaker model compared with ResNet, it still can be up to accuracy of standard ResNet by rejecting about 5% samples and plus 2% accuracy of ResNet by rejecting 10% samples. In conclusion, current computer vision systems try to process all instances no matter how hard they are. This optimistic attitude can lead to critical failures in some applications. We have seen this bad influence before in autonomous driving and medical di uh, diagnosis. But our realistic predictor can solve this to a certain extent. It rejects some hard examples to guarantee a target performance on the ones they process. In order to implement it, we propose an adversary architecture to joint learn the classifier and the specific hardness predictor. This has shown that it can improve classification when hard examples are rejected and superior to thresholding of 
confidence score, for example, rejection. Source code has been available online. Welcome to our process. Thank you. Questions, please. Uh, hi. Uh, I wonder if you comment uh, your approach versus uh, a network that directly outputs uncertainty, and then you reject based on the uncertainty score. Uh, sorry? Uh, I wonder if you comment your approach with uh, respect to an approach that output the uncertainty. Uh, like, you know, there's... Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. I, I think our uh, learn hardness score is different from the uncertainty, the confidence score. Uh, for confidence score, it, it's actually the uh, maximum value of the softmax distribution, but uh, our hardness score is learned by, by the element of the uh, softmax distribution corresponding to one truth label. It, it's uh, two different values. Any more questions? I have a question. My question is that, uh, uh, what's the difference between your method and the curriculum methods? Uh, uh, for cur uh, curriculum learning, uh, I think uh, there are two uh, main differences. For curricular learning, it's, uh, it inputs the easy example first and then uh, hard example later. But for our method, uh, we actually input easy and hard example together at the beginning. Uh, although we give uh, them two, uh, we give them different weights. Uh, and I think the biggest problem, uh, uh, biggest difference is that uh, for curriculum learning, uh, the goal is to get a good classifier on training. But uh, for our predictor classifier, uh, we actually want to guarantee a target, uh, guarantee a target performance on test, uh, not training. Thank you. Are there any more questions? It's difficult to see from here to just speak up if any microphone. It's not the case. Okay. Thank you very much to the speaker and the audience. You.